Evil Does Not Exist is a film about the relationship between man and nature, rural and urban spaces, and the conflict that arises when one tries to encroach on the other. The film is about a man named Takumi, a jack-of-all-trades living with his daughter, Hana, in Harasawa, a small village a couple hours away from Tokyo. We watch in long shots as he chops wood, gathers water from a stream, and drives to pick up his daughter from school. One day, he and other members of the community are given a presentation about a new glamping site that is being proposed in the area. The community has issues with the plans, as they involve adding a septic tank that wouldn't meet the capacity of the site, and in effect, send waste into the water that the community depends on. The film came about from a collaboration between Ryusuke Hamaguchi and Eiko Ishibashi, the composer of Hamaguchi's previous film, Drive My Car. She originally asked Hamaguchi to create images for her new live performance that would play in concerts. Hamaguchi was inspired by the rural surroundings of Ishibashi's studio and a true story of a company trying to build the same glamping site that's depicted in the film. Ryusuke Hamaguchi settles us into nature in the first shot of the film, a slow tracking shot of tree branches silhouetted across a blue sky. The first act of the film features many long shots of our characters engaging in nature and living within it peacefully especially Hana, who seems to have a mystical connection with the wood she lives in. She watches a family of deer for an extended scene, wrapped up in the simple majesty of a wild animal. Hamaguchi uses nature as a tool to connect the audience with the characters. We understand the importance of this land without any dialogue. It's clear Hamaguchi's intent is making a film reduced to its bare essentials, time, space, and movement. But in doing so, he has also reduced the most important aspect of any film. The story, whether being direct or impressionistic, is so dearly missing from Evil Does Not Exist. The film goes on to only make statements. It doesn't utilize the storytelling power of film to emphasize these statements, and in doing so, minimizes the impact on the audience. What Hamaguchi has to say is initially engaging, mainly the frustrating inhumanity of corporate greed. The company which is building the site is actually a talent agency. They have no background in construction. It's clear they're cutting corners to save money for self-profit. The townspeople bring up important issues they have with the glamping site. These issues will irrevocably harm the town and ultimately displace the people living there. These pleas for acknowledgement are met with robotic responses of, thank you for your concern, we will pass it on. The characters that represent the building company don't even have a say in the final decisions. They're just the middlemen. You could make the argument that they are as much victims of corporate greed as the townspeople, forced to take the wrath their bosses are too cowardly to face themselves. The score is the strongest aspect of the film. Eiko Ishibashi's meditative and emotional strings play over many scenes, settling the audience in early for what to expect. We get a sense of nature through music. It almost feels like the music is the sounds of the trees and the forest themselves, calling out to be heard. But the score can only take the audience so far. We need other things to keep us engaged. As the film enters its second half, it begins to fizzle. Storylines come out of nowhere that almost conflict with the first half of the film, and by the end, you're baffled as to what Hamaguchi was thinking in the first place. There's nothing wrong with ambiguity in film, but Hamaguchi leaves us without reason for the ambiguity at all. 